Richard Wright's story published announces its concern immediately in its title, Almost a Man. Unless one knows Richard Wright was a black writer, dealing with black characters, however, one misses the double power of that title. Many American writers have probed the pain and turmoil of being almost a man or woman. But black writers and leaders like Malcolm X and Martin Luther King have shown how manhood is doubly hard to achieve for the black adolescent. Economic independence, self-sufficiency, freedom of choice, all these characteristics we associate with manhood have been precisely those our same. Young David Glover, the central character in Wright's story, illustrates this denial clearly and its result. To David, the whole world denies him the respect he needs to be a man. How powerfully Richard Wright must have felt David's experience. It was much like reliving his own. Wright, too, grew up in the rural South, his family bound by race and poverty. Like David, his family was not only poor, but without means or hope of escaping its poverty. But the bottled-up anger David feels, Wright found an outlet for Wright's frustration and fury exploded into powerful works of fiction. By expressing the pent-up anger and driving dreams of his people, Wright became a major American writer. David's imagination is more impoverished than Wright, his dreams more illusory. He has not yet found a way of making his passionate desire to be a man into reality. What he will become is for us to imagine. Hey, Mr. Robinson. Yeah. Look at Dave over Jenny, this here's the last row today. Tell you something, I'd be glad it is. It's you too, the way you're dragging it. This ground's so hard, I hate it when it gets this way. It just rained. Softened it up a bit. Boy, we 
Mr. Hawkins ain't paying you to stand out there and throw rocks. There's work to be done around here. I wasn't throwing nothing. Yes, you was. Don't be lying. I saw you. Looking right at you. That's right. I seen you, too. No wonder you ain't half the flower of this field right. You ain't got your mind on what you're doing, that's all. Some of the dirt turned over and some of it ain't. Now look at that. We got to break our backs half doing it over again. Well, Mr. Robinson, I, I done the best I could. It, it's this old plow. Now, don't be blaming it on no plow. Well, Mr. Hawkins ain't said nothing about it. Mr. Hawkins ain't got to work out here in these here fields. We do. Now, don't you be sassy. Ain't nobody getting sassy. Now, I know your father, boy. He ain't going to like no throwing rocks and wasting time and not doing your job right. I'm just trying to give you some good advice. Talk to them people, so stupid, think they know everything. I ain't afraid of them. All they is is field niggas, not me. I ain't gonna be stuck up in this cloud for long. Get me a gun. That's what I got to do, Jenny. Yeah, go on down by the creek, practice with it. I'll be real good at it for long. Maybe Mama let me buy one when she gets my pay from Mr. Hawkins. Just ask her to let me have some of my own money, that's all. I'm sure old enough. in the barn, boy. Kind of early, ain't it? Yes, sir. I'm just brushing Jenny down some. You, uh, you have good hunting, Mr. Hawkins? I've done all right. You do everything I told you to do out there, boy? Done a good job now, didn't you? Yes, sir. Well, how is old Jenny? You ain't pushing her too hard now, are you? No, sir. You're doing just fine. Well, she may not look like much, but she served her time. Ain't you, Jenny? That's right. Well, I'll check what you've done later. See you in the morning, boy. Be on time now. We've got lots to do out there. Sir, I'll be here. Jenny, I got to hurry up and get to Mr. Joe's. What can I do for you? Oh, nothing. I was just figuring actually I could take a look at that catalog for a while. If you let me take it home with me tonight, I promise, Mr. Joe, I'll bring it right on back tomorrow, just as soon as I finish my plow. Are you fixing to buy something? Yes, sir. That's what I was thinking. Since when did you, Mama, start letting you have your own money? Oh, for a long while now. Oh, well, shoot, Mr. Joe, I, I, I'm getting to be a man. I, I'll be 16 soon, and... I should be having some of my own money. Well, huh? Now, what's that supposed to mean? You want to take my advice, boy? Take your time. Yes, sir. Now, uh, what you want from the catalog, boy? I'm going to buy a gun. 
<laughs> a gun? What you need with a gun? You ain't planning no trouble with a gun, are you, boy? Nah, Mr. Joe, I ain't planning no trouble. I just want to hold on to it. Shoot some crows, just to practice with it, that's all. promised to bring that thing right back here, because that's the only one that I got. As soon as I finish my plowing, I'll get it right back here. You really got to have one. If you got to have one, you might as well buy it from me as anybody. I got one I could sell you. You got a gun, Mr. Joe? Can it shoot? Of course it can. What do you think I keep it for? What, what, what kind is it? A new one? No, not exactly. It's uh, been around. It's, uh, a left-hand wheeler, and it'll put a hole through you as big as a truck. How much you asking for it, Mr. Joe? I'll give you a bargain, boy. Uh, four? Uh, let's make it two dollars. Two dollars? The two dollars ain't nothing. I can have that as soon as I get my pay. Do as you please. You know where you can find it. Thanks a lot, Mr. Joe. I'll see you tomorrow. Place, did you? No, ma'am. It's just some old catalog Mr. Joe gave me. Oh, let me see it. Let me see. Oh, this be nice to keep around here. Oh, no, Mama. He just gave it to me to look at. What's the matter with you, boy? Oh, you be yelling at me. I ain't your mule. Neither of you complain about the food being cold, because I don't want to hear about it. Woman, damn, ain't nobody complaining. I work hard all day long, too, hauling stuff around for Mr. Hawkins. Listen to me, lady. Huh? <laughs> oh. Would you cut that little? Good. Ah. I had to fix that post on the pigsty. And that dead blame truck's still overheating. Oh, book will help me fix it, ain't that right, Booker? Yes, sir. Well. Hmm. Food still looks hot to me. Hey, how you doing, sir? Fine, sir. All right, come on now. Let's bow our heads and give thanks to the Lord. Father, we thank thee for this food in which we are now about to receive, for the nourishments of our bodies and strengthen our hearts to love thee more. These and all other blessings we ask in Jesus' name and for his sake we pray. And let us all say, Amen. Amen. Hmm, looks good. How are you and Mr. Hawkins getting along? Boy, you hear me talking to you? Sir? I ask you, how was you and old man Hawkins getting along? Now pay some attention when somebody's talking to you. You do when you work? Yes, sir. Our plow's better than anybody's got working for him. Mm -hmm. Well, I certainly hope you keep your mind on your plow better than you do when somebody's talking to you. Yes, sir. Okay. Let's call.
Mama? Mm -hmm. Mr. Hawkins give you my pay yet? Yeah, he give it to me. Why are you asking? Nothing, just asking is all. Mama, can I show you something a minute? David, I'm tired. Just let's get started on your hair. Mama, just look at something a minute, all David. right? David! All right. What is it I'm supposed to be looking at? Come on, boy. See this one, Mama? It looks something like this. That's the one I want to have. Boys, you really lost your mind. Two dollars, Mama. That's what I could get it for. Over my dead body, you will. Oh, now, come on, Mama. You're backing down on me now. Now, you promised me I could have one someday. I know what I told you. And the one thing you ain't is a man yet, so... I'm I almost. Sure wish everybody stopped saying that. It's all right when I do something wrong. You and Daddy all the time, young man this and young man that. How come I'm a man then and not now? David, you're not too big for me to spank now. Mama, I mean it. If you let me, I promise I will never ask you for nothing else. Not one bit. Now, why do you think I told Mr. Hawkins to give me your pay, huh? Because I know your foolishness, that's why. That money he give me is for your clothes for the winter, and ain't none of it going for no nonsense. Two dollars is a whole lot of money. I don't want to hear another word. Now, come on over here and let's wash your hair. Come on, boy. David. Mama, I ain't asked you for nothing all summer, has I? I've done my work good. But that's what you're supposed to do now, ain't it? Yeah, Mama, but, but Mama, I just want two dollars. I'm making up real easy. All I have to do is work just a little bit extra time. And Mr. Hawkins... David, don't make me tired. Now just sit. You know we needs a gun. Daddy ought to have one way folks are steaming around here. Remember last year when them men escaped from the, from the penitentiary? You thought we needed one then. Oh, come on, Mama. I'll get the gun and then I'll give it to Daddy, all right? So restless. Restless. Like some kind of jackrabbit. Always been that way. No, your father's gonna have a fit if he ever knows I'll let you have money for one of these things. Besides, who's gonna sell it to you? Mr. Joe said he would. Mr. Joe said he would. Mr. Joe is crazy. Folks around here work hard for two dollars. Money just don't grow on trees, David. Mama, I told you. Shh. I'll let you have it. I just, oh, just, just thank, thank you. No, wait, wait, just hold it. Thank you, hold, 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 thank hold, you hold, hold, now. Just hold it and let me finish. For your father. So no whining, no lip, no nothing. And you get it and you bring it straight back here, put it in my hand tomorrow. Right here. And I will give it to him myself. Do you understand me now? Thank you, Mama.
Y'all see this? Huh? All right. What you thinks I didn't plow that field right, huh? Well, come on now, speak up. I ain't got time to be fooling. Anybody think I ain't a man yet? Y'all afraid to talk, huh? Well, I'm gonna let you go this time since none of y'all is crazy enough to fool with me. But I'm gonna give you just one little warning. This. Sneaking in here so late, I couldn't even talk to you about that gun without your father knowing. Well, where is it? Did you get it? Mama, I got it. Shh. I got it. Well, then hand it over. I got it hid outside near the barn. To keep it a surprise for Daddy. I'll go on out there and get it for you if you want. No, you won't. Near the barn? Yes, sir. Tomorrow morning, as soon as I wake up, Daddy's gone out of the field. I'll go get it for you then, all right? All right. But I don't want no more foolishness from you. Bright and early in the morning. Or else you're going to think the devil done got you by the tail. You hear me? Yes, sir. Bless yourself, Jenny. Ain't that pretty? Two dollars, that's what it costs. And it's loaded, too. Stay long.
God, Jenny, I swear I didn't shoot at you, Jenny. Jenny, we got to stop. We got to stop this blood, Jenny. Oh, Lord, we in trouble big, girl. Come on now, Jenny, you got to help me now. Look at it, Jenny, it's just coming out. Oh, Jesus, please help me. Oh, no. Oh, no, Jenny. <laughs> it's all right. Whoa, Jenny, come on now, girl. Come on, stay with me, Jenny. Jenny, come on, girl. Oh, no, Jenny. Jenny, come on, Jenny. Oh, God. Tell me what you done, boy. Now tell me. Mama, I didn't do nothing. I... Your mama asked you a question, boy. Now open up your mouth. Now you just tell them what you told me, boy. Come on now. Now, Mr. Hawkins just told you to do something. Now go on and do it. All right. I, I brung Jenny down here just like Mr. Hawkins said. Yeah. And then all of a sudden she, she starts, she starts spooking like, like something's matter with her. And then she starts kicking up like she's crazy or something. And I tries to simmer her down, but she just wouldn't. And then she pulls away and, and she twists herself around and turns herself around back down on a plow and stuck herself. On the plow. Uh-huh, and I try to help her, but before I noticed she was gone. Now, did you ever hear anything like that in all your life? I've done heard that story five times, and it's the damnest story I ever heard. I don't know, Mr. Hawkins. The damn show looked like a bullet hole to me. Tell him the truth, David. Mama, don't. Please don't. Well, where is it? The gun. What gun? I knew damn well a gun had to make that hole. Are you saying this boy had a gun? You been lying to me. What's the matter? Oh, oh, you're lying. You're Now you got everybody upset. You got me upset. Now did you shoot you? Did you shoot that you? Yes. But I didn't mean to. I didn't. Why I want to? I was just trying to see if he could shoot. That's all. Where the devil did you get a gun? Where'd you get it from? from Mr. Joe. From Mr. Joe. Mama, give me the money. Yeah, I give it to him. Well, the boy kept pestering and worrying me like to drive me crazy, so I give in. But it was for you, Bob. It was for you. I, I told you to bring it right back here, now, didn't I? Yes, sir. Well, I don't need no gun. Did I ask anybody for it? Did I? You're as bad as this boy is. Be trusting him with something like that. You see, he ain't nothing but a boy. And a hard-headed boy at that. You know, I feel like tan in his black hide oh, right now. I do. Right in front of all these you people. Know what I don't understand is why in the world did you shoot the mule for, boy? I thought you liked Jenny. I did. 
I don't know what happened, I, but I wasn't shooting at her. I was just trying to see if I could shoot it before I brought it home to you, Daddy. I'd never fired no gun before, and, and the thing went off. My hand was shaking, I couldn't keep it still. I looked up, and Jenny's bleeding. Oh. Well, the upshot is, you just bought yourself a dead mule. Mr. Hawkins, I swear to God, I didn't mean to shoot her. Don't make no difference what you mean. You killed her, didn't you? Well, it's gonna be the death of me yet. Well, you don't have to worry about it, Bob. Just let the boy keep working for me, and I'll take two dollars a month till he's paid up. How much you want for him? Fifty dollars. That's fair enough. Fifty dollars. All right, boy. Hand it over. Where's the gun? Hand it here. I, I throwed it away. You did what? It's in the creek. It's in the creek. Well, I want you tomorrow morning to go down to that creek. And I don't care if it takes all day long. I want you to go down to that creek. And I want you to find that gun and bring it back here. Do you understand me, boy? And I want you to take that gun to Mr. Joe and I tell him that you don't want it. Don't, none of us want it, but we damn sure need our money back. Do you understand me? Do you understand me? Yes, sir. Now go on, get out of my face, boy. Go on. <laughs> They're all laughing at me. And they ain't right. And I fix them. I fix them. And Mama, she's just like the rest of them. Niggas. She know it was an accident. Not even spoke up, never even tried to help. Daddy beating on me with that dumb strap. Never know when to quit. He ain't gonna no more. Other folks shoot these things. Ain't something so special. I can do it easy as anybody. Just some old piece of junk gun. David, got to do it. It's got to. Just wanted you to know before I left. 